Well, it's lovely to be with you. It's lovely to be here in the Outward Place building. Um, uh, yeah, I first kind of came to church here about, uh, oh, about 28 years ago uh, when we first started uh, meeting in this place. So it's lovely to be back here and it's lovely to see quite a few familiar faces. If you don't know me, um, I'm Tim, part of the Leadership Team down at Woodlands now, but I've been part of the Community Church family for a long while. And I think Beth and I would still feel this is really our tribe here. I mean, this is our... So... Um, uh, um, no, I don't know if you know me, but um, when it comes to prayer, uh, I, I'm not sure if I'm a, kind of uh, the world's best prayer, but praying prayers of repentance is probably one of my best prayers. <laughs> um, uh, I'm not sure. How, how many of you here this evening would ever would say that kind of you are uh, you are perfect? Any shows of hands? Okay. Uh, anyone say that you've never done anything wrong or kind of? Okay. Uh, anyone say that they've not done anything wrong this week? And we're talking about Monday to Sunday, not Sunday to, to, to Sunday. Okay, so, I mean, the reality is that, kind of, uh, we do things that are wrong. And whether you're someone here this evening and you're a Christian, or whether you're someone who's here investigating what Christianity is about, I mean, the reality is that we all do things that uh, are wrong. We actually, we all, we all do things that we're, we're not proud of. We do things that, kind of, we wish we hadn't done. Uh, sometimes we can feel remorse or guilt. Um, and I suppose what kind of prayer can help sort that out? What kind of prayer can help sort out that sense of, of, of failure, of shame, of guilt, of things that we do when we're, we're trying our best to be a good kind of holy kind of Christian? Uh, and just there's something about the life on the inside of us that kind of bubbles up and bubbles out. And uh, we make mistakes, we say things, we do things, we think things that are just not helpful. And sometimes we know they're wrong. Actually, sometimes we know that they're kind of quite dark. And, and we think, I'd just love to be free from that kind of stuff. So tonight we're going to look at, kind of briefly, then there's going to be some questions around um, how uh, do we pray uh, prayers of repentance? Um, but I just want to say, kind of, I'm going to do two times of prayer. So although I was asked to do prayers of repentance, um, I think I'm going to do prayers of repentance and prayers of confession. Because I think actually there's probably just a little bit of a difference between kind of when we do things that are wrong, do we need to pray a prayer of repentance or do we need to pray a prayer of confession? And I think they're different. I think they're slightly nuanced. And I think it does, certainly it's helped me to live a life that is free from condemnation of where the enemy wants to come and say, Tim, you're a rubbish Christian. You think you're a good Christian? Ah, what about that thought? What about that? And condemnation kind of comes sweeping in. And repentance and confession, I think, are slightly different. So what is the difference between uh, repentance and confession? Well, I think repentance is to do with turning around. It's to do, it's, it's to do with a kind of a change of direction. That's what repentance is. So when John the Baptist comes along, he, he, he preaches repentance. He says, there's someone going to come in the, and the world's not going to be the same again. His name's Jesus. He's the Lamb of God. and He's going to take away all the wrongdoing of this world. And what he calls them to do is repent, is to turn around. You've been wandering your life in this direction. And the deal is repentance is I'm going to turn from living my life my own way. And there's a life that is God's way. And it's turning from this way, and it's turning towards God and turning uh, to follow his life. Which is why when those first followers of Jesus started to, to preach, and day of Pentecost, here's Peter, he's preaching, and, he, and the people say, what must we do to be saved? Well, repent. Rethink. Rethink the way that life has been going. And for some of you, even tonight, that might be the deal. The deal is you've been doing life your own way and you've been trying to make a good hash, a good go of it, but actually you know that you fail. You know that kind of you disappoint yourself. You know you've disappointed your friends or your mum or whoever it is. And, and actually, at the end of the day, you've probably disappointed God. God who loves you, who knows you, and has so many hopes and dreams for a life that's going to work so well for you. And if you're just going your own way without paying any attention to him, you need to rethink if those of you that do French, repenser is to rethink, rethink, repent. Kind of it's rethink it. It's about, it's, I need to rethink my way. And, and Peter says, repent, be baptized, and you'll find salvation. You'll find forgiveness for all those things you've done wrong. And so I think the prayer of repentance is, I suppose, for those who the very first time realize they've been walking in the wrong direction. They've been walking in a selfish, self-absorbed, a god kind of not in the picture kind of way, 
And there's the call to say, I'm going to turn around, repent, I'm going to follow God. Now, I know for some of you in this room, you've prayed that kind of prayer of repentance, of rethinking, of reorientating your life, of restructuring it from going your own way to God's way. But mm, do we ever need to repent again? Or once we've repented and once we've been born again, do we need to repent again? Well, I think this is where repentance and, and confession are slightly different. Now, I think if you deliberately then decide to re-repent, <laughs> and you think, you know what, I just kind of, I don't want to go God's any, way anymore, and, and you deliberately turn around and say, do you know what, I'm going to go this way once again. I'm, deli- I'm going to deliberately not obey what God says. I'm going to deliberately choose to go this way. I'm going to choose wrongdoing. I'm going to choose stuff that I know on my better days that I, I shouldn't be doing, but I'm, I, I want to do this anyway. Now, if you find yourself in a place like that, actually, you probably need to repent again. You probably need to turn around. And someone like David in the Old Testament, David was somebody who, kind of in his, kind of in his youth, he was just so in love with God. He so knew him. He was there as a shepherd and kind of fighting off bears and lions and singing songs with his harp and kind of... Uh, in his early days, fighting Goliath, seeing kind of the Philistines, he, he loved God. But there came a time where he chose to ignore God and chose to go his own way once again. And, and what he did is he, he kind of, he should have been out fighting battles, but he saw Bathsheba, uh, this beautiful woman who was taking a bath on a roof, and he chose lust. He chose adultery. Actually, not only did he commit adultery and get this woman pregnant, but she was married already and, and it got her husband murdered. He chose to go his own way. And for a year, because a child was born from that adultery, um, a child had been born, so it was at least nine months, if you know your biology, um, maybe in a year. And in all that time, he'd not repented. He'd, he actually was still kind of living this sense of a, of, of a lie until Nathan comes and says, kind of this, this little story, and, and, it, and he suddenly he's cut to the heart, and he knows that I've been living this way. And suddenly this prophetic word comes to say, and, and he has this psalm, Psalm 50, 51, and it's a psalm of repentance. For someone who was loving God and chose the wrong path, actually there was a, a season where he had to repent again. And, and this is what he says. Uh, in, in the psalm as he tries to it put into words what it felt like to be for at least a whole year being outside of the presence of God, following his own direction. He says this, Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love, according to your great compassion. Blot out my transgressions. Wash away all my iniquity. Cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions. My sin is always before me. It hadn't been for a whole year, but maybe now it was. they have become convicted of his sin. Against you, you only have I sinned. I've done what's evil in your sight. So you're right in your verdict and justified when you judge. Surely I was sinful at birth, sinful from the time my mother conceived me. Yet you desire faithfulness even in the womb. You taught me wisdom in that secret place. Cleanse me with hyssop and I will be clean. Wash me and I'll be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones you've crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sin. Blot out all my iniquity. Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. They were the words of a man who realized that he'd been going his own way once again, having known God's love and God's faithfulness. And, and there was a time where he's cut to the heart and realizes, actually, God, I've, I've blown it. I've, this relationship with you that I, I was enjoying and it was so rich and so sweet, somehow through my selfishness, through my choices, through my evil actions, I kind of, ah, I've gone this way and I need to repent. He says that kind of things like, um, I want to know again, um, uh, your presence. I want to be clean on the inside. I want to be forgiven. And maybe there's people here this evening, and, and, and that's how you're feeling. You're feeling that I, I kind of knew God, but I have been living deliberately my own way, and, and I've lost something of, 
things that he says here, that, that I've lost God's presence. I've Somehow his Holy Spirit it doesn't seem to be at work like he used to. I, I've lost something of the joy that I used to have. I, I thought that freedom would bring me joy and happiness, but actually choosing my own way somehow on the inside, I've lost my joy. God, I need you to restore in me the joy of my salvation. And, and for David, he had to live with the consequences the rest of his life, those choices. So forgiveness isn't sort of making everything bright and shiny again. But forgiveness is sorting out your own heart. And as he prays, prays a prayer of repentance, he finds a cleansing on the inside. He walks the rest of his life for a broken person who's made wrong choices and living with the consequences, but he knows what it is to be clean on the inside. And I wonder whether for some people this evening that to, to know what it is, to, 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 maybe you need to rethink. Maybe you, you've known God in the past and you, you've turned your own way. And even this evening, the Holy Spirit is saying to you, will you rethink? Will you re-decide? Will you, re will you turn around? And will you look to me? Because when we look to God, we find his presence. We find his Holy Spirit. We find his joy. We find a cleansing. We're finding a release from the freedom of, of shame and guilt that, that so kind of clings to, to our insides. And that's what a prayer of repentance is. It's turning around. It's changing direction. It's leaving our selfishness. And it's coming to find who God is. Now, I wonder if that's the kind of prayer that we pray every week. And I think probably not. I think that's the kind of prayer that we pray when we, when we just know that we have been deliberately going our, our own way. Because there's times where we still would say we're trying to follow Jesus. Actually, we're trying our best to follow God, but, but somehow we, we stumble and we fall. We, we're kind of going in that direction. We've not turned our backs on God and need to therefore repent. We're going in this direction, but somehow our... Our humanity, our, our kind of flesh life, our, our, our sinful nature, it kind of, we, we trip up, we, we do things that are wrong, we, we do say things that are selfish and we do say things that are, are harmful, we do gossip and we're, we're slightly jealous and, and, and we do that kind of stuff. And it's not that we're kicking against God, but we do that kind of stuff. And what does the Bible say that kind of thing requires? And I think for me that does require a uh, prayer of confession. It's a prayer of putting your hands up and saying, yes, it's me. I've done that. It's owning your actions. I don't know, um, uh, this last week, I made a mistake. Uh, I didn't intend to make a mistake. I did make a mistake. And it had consequences. And I had to own up. Um, uh, about two and a half weeks ago, I had a strange little growth on my leg, so I had to have a biopsy. So I went for a little operation. They kind of cut it out, kind of sewed it up, and um, uh, two weeks afterwards, they said, go and have the, the stitches taken out. So on Monday, I went to have the stitches taken out. But on Wednesday, didn't mean to, but I kind of just crouched down. And as I, as I crouched down, the, the, the scars on the back of my calf <laughs> and the wound just went, boop, <laughs> and um, opened up. And I had to go to the, the doctor and say, I'm very sorry. <laughs> I, I just wasn't thinking. I thought I could, it wasn't hurting anymore. I just kind of crouched down. As I crouched down, kind of, and they thought, looked at it and thought, oh, no. They were very kind. And they just kind of put the stereo strips on and said, kind of, um, I'm sure it'll be fine. <laughs> I'm still hoping it will be. But there was, there was something about just saying, I didn't intend it. Kind of, I, I've made a mistake. It was me. Hands up. And as you own up, there's the possibility of to finding some healing. There's the possibility of finding some restoration, there's some of sorting things out. It's actually when you don't own up, it's actually, if I didn't own up, kind of, I had to go up and tell Bev as well, and kind of, very silly, I've done this. Actually, I could not have owned up. And if I don't, didn't own up, actually that open wound would have soon got badly infected. And actually there would have been, I, I could have, and actually it's the same with doing things that are wrong. If we don't own up, Actually, it can soon become a little habit. And actually, it becomes a little habit that just bit by bit by bit by bit by bit by bit by bit, we find ourselves turning around. But if we confess, if we say, hands up, it was me, I'm sorry, um, there is something about, well, I mean, this is the verse that uh, when I was brought up in an Anglican church, we would say this every Sunday. We'd say it Sunday morning and Sunday, after, uh, Sunday evening. Uh, we often thought, what happened on Sunday afternoon? That meant you had to pray this again. It was the kind of Anglican Sunday afternoon kind of. Um, uh, but it says this kind of, if we claim that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. The truth is not in us, actually. I'm, I'm so pleased nobody put the hand up earlier on. 
Uh, but if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just. He will forgive us and will purify us from all unrighteousness. So if we confess our sins, not if we repent of our sins, not if we say, I will never, ever, ever, ever do that again. I don't know if you can pray that kind of prayer. <laughs> I will never, ever, ever. I, mean, I never pray that prayer because I know that I, I will do it again. Actually, the deal is not saying I'll never do it again. It's saying I've done it this time. It's just confessing. It's just admitting. It's just owning that selfishness. It's just owning that lie. It's just owning kind of that, that lustful thought. It's just kind of, it's, it's owning that, that you took something that wasn't yours. And as you own it before God, he says he's faithful and just. He'll forgive you. Actually, I'm still walking this direction. I've just kind of tripped and fallen, and I stand up and confess, and God dusts me down. And what that means is that I can actually fairly easy. It's not a big, oh, I've got to repent. I'm so evil. I'm so wicked. Actually, I'm just in this kind of battle between wanting genuinely to live for Jesus and realizing I'm in a human body with its failings and, and one day it will be totally renewed. But now, just by bit by bit by bit, I'm being transformed to become more and more like Jesus. But I will fail. If I say this, I don't sin, I'm deceiving myself. The truth isn't in me. But if I confess God's faith, he will forgive me. Now, I used to be a physics teacher before I became a church leader, and I love physics because it's, it's so reliable. I mean, it's just so, it's just so true. I mean, that there's, and although sometimes the experiments in class didn't work out quite how I wanted, actually the laws behind it are true. I mean, the, the, I mean, gravity, it just is true. I mean, I let it go, it goes to the floor. It just happened every time. Every time I was little, you drop things, it'll all, gravity is just true. And the God who made gravity is the same God who says, if you confess your sins, he's faithful and just, he will forgive you. Actually, I can trust in God's forgiveness just as much as I can trust in gravity. And I trust in gravity every day. And so, what if you've made a mistake this week? Are you a poor, bad Christian? Ah, you're just a Christian. <laughs> what do you do about it? Well, if you know you're deliberately going against God, then you repent and turn around and you find in Jesus there is forgiveness, there's life, there's welcome. But if you know that you're trying to follow Jesus and you just make those silly mistakes, and maybe you make those mistakes time and time again, what God's asking you to do is just admit, just confess. Tell God, put your hand up, it was me. I thought that, I said that, I did that. And what you find is God is faithful and just and he will forgive you, he will cleanse you. That's the truth, as certain as gravity, as certain as F equals MA. Oh, yes, kind of, God will forgive you. Uh, that's the truth. So just so I finish and we go on to some questions, um, uh, how does that work out just day by day? Well, I think uh, what the enemy wants to do is to con condemn you. He wants to take up those failings, those little kind of things, those little, you, you're trying to follow Jesus, but you're tripping up and you're falling flat, flat on your face. The devil wants to say you're rubbish, you're no good, you're useless. Kind of, you're, you compare yourself to, uh, to, to Dave and Roderick, and you think, oh, I can never be that holy. And, and, and you beat yourself up, and, you, and the devil jumps on the back of that and condemns you. And, kind of, and it's a lie. Actually, it's a lie, because what... God says, is there's therefore no condemnation for those who are Christ. Actually, when you're in Jesus, actually there's no condemnation. It's not you're rubbish, 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 rubbish. You're useless, you're useless. It's actually you're saved, you're rescued, you're redeemed. There's grace, there's mercy, there's hope, there's a future. And actually, of course you made mistakes. Actually, that's human. But if you confess your wrongdoings, actually that is, opens yourself up to the divine. To find that God scoops you up, puts his arms around you and rescues you. So the devil wants to push you down, but actually, the Holy Spirit does want to convict you. <laughs> actually, the conviction is just a little kind of nudge, a little prompting. Because sometimes you can get used to doing things that are wrong. And it's not as though you're, you're deliberately turning back on God, but actually, even going this way, you kind of do things. And, and sometimes the Holy Spirit does, does need to remind you, actually, that was selfish, Actually, when you said that about a person, that was slightly bitchy. When you did that, kind of, it was, you tried to make yourself look good compared to other people. When you did that, it was kind of motivated because of jealousy, because of a low self Actually, sometimes the Holy Spirit needs to convict you. Actually, needs to help you to make the right choices in life. And actually, the right choices, followed by a right choice, followed by a right choice, actually starts to form a character. There's a great book, I don't know if anyone's recommended it, uh, by John Mark Comer called Live No Lies. Has anyone read that? 
If you've not read it, it's an absolutely brilliant book. It's my favourite book of the last two or three years. Um, and it, it, talks about the, it talks about the devil, the flesh, and the world. How do you, how do you overcome those things? Um, uh, and the thing that he was saying was about how do you overcome the, the flesh, the, kind of, the bit of me that will try to kind of drag me away from God, that kind of keeps on making the mistakes. And, it, and he said, was saying about how we make, when the Holy Spirit prompts us, we respond quickly to say sorry, to say confess, to find forgiveness. And actually, each time we fall and, and get up, find forgiveness, we take another little step. Each time we fall, say sorry, actually. And, and, and those choices are active choices in this direction rather than that direction. Actually, when you take active choices, actually you become the kind of person that wouldn't want to do that again. If you're really open to the Holy Spirit, the, the, the desire to do those things starts to diminish. And choice by choice by choice by choice, as the Holy Spirit convicts you, as you respond to that kind of little nudge, you confess, say you're sorry, and find forgiveness. Bit by bit by bit, you become the kind of person that actually would generally not want to, to do that anymore, would not want to go down that pathway that maybe you've always gone down. And I suppose that's my prayer for this evening, is that we'd find what it is to, to live free. Not to be bashed down and say, you're not good enough, you're not kind enough, you don't pray enough, you don't, all the devil wants to squash you down. But you find actually there's a freedom. There's a freedom to live. And when I make mistakes, I just put my hand up and say, God, I'm sorry. He forgives you generously, lavishly. As you uh, open to the prompting of the Holy Spirit, more bit by bit by bit, you become transformed into his image. So I've, I've probably had more than my time. So I probably will say a little prayer for us. Uh, and then uh, I will hand it back over to Matt. Um, but I wonder, just as we have a little moment, just to, to think... Actually, maybe that some people, actually repentance is the deal, even tonight. That you know that you've been actively ignoring God. You've been actively trying to live without him. You've been actively trying to block him out. You've been living just by your own kind of trying to be true to yourself and trying to be true to who you are. And, and maybe even this evening, God's saying, will you turn around to me? Will you turn around to find me? Will you... Turn around and look in my direction because in Jesus you can be forgiven. In Jesus there's new life. In Jesus there's joy and peace. And if that's you this evening, then just pray a little prayer like this. God, I'm sorry that I've been living my life my own way. Maybe even those of you here here tonight who you've been Christians for a while, but you know just at the moment you're, you've got your back towards God. And he's saying, will you turn around? Dear daughter, dear son, will you turn around? Will you repent? Will you come back? And if that's you, again, you can say, God, I turn to you now. I'm sorry for living my life when I know you're good, I know you're true. And I want to know tonight that restored relationship, like David said, restore unto me the joy of my salvation. Don't take your Holy Spirit from me. Renew that sense of your presence in my life. And for those of us that sometimes can feel racked by guilt or shame or condemnation, I thank you that all we need to do is confess. And as true as gravity is true, you forgive us time and time and time again. And as we make those right choices for you, we become the kind of person where sin loses its appeal. Help us, I pray. Even this week, help us, I pray, to know your forgiveness. Even now, I pray, will you remove that sense of shame and guilt as we admit things, even this week, we've done and said, and we've thought, that we could be cleansed on the inside as white as snow. In Jesus' name, amen.